In this video, we will discuss current components inside a PN junction diode. And we will also derive the diode current equation. In my point of view, more than the derivation itself, the assumptions that we make while deriving are more important to understand. To start with, let me take a PN junction under equilibrium. As always, we are taking P plus N junction diode, where the depletion width is W, and the electric field is directed from N side to P side because the exposed donor ions on N side is positive and exposed acceptor ions on P side is negative. As a result, electric field is directed from positive charge to negative charge. And because electric field is there, we have drift current in this direction, J drift, and at the same time, there is diffusion as well in the opposite direction. Under equilibrium, these two components would balance out each other exactly. As a result, you wouldn't see a net current flowing through the PN junction as we didn't apply any potential difference. We assumed P side doping is higher than N side. That's why the depletion width on P side is smaller compared to the depletion width on N side. Let me take the same PN junction where we have electric field inside this in this direction. And now let us apply a potential difference across this PN junction. Let's say the potential difference we are applying is V. And let me also assume that the potential we are applying is directly getting applied across the junction, which means I'm neglecting the potential drops across the neutral P region and neutral N region. And the electric field because of this potential would be in the opposite direction. As a result, the net electric field would be in the same direction as that of the equilibrium case, but the magnitude of electric field would have reduced because of which the depletion width would also decrease. Let me reflect that on this figure. Because the electric field at the depletion region has decreased, the drift current would reduce as well because the drift current at the junction is caused by the electric field. As electric field decreases, the drift current near the junction would decrease. In equilibrium case, the electric field was holding the diffusion of carriers. As the electric field decreased now, the diffusion current would increase. So the net current that we would see would be diffusion current in nature. Let me take the equilibrium case away as we are concentrating on the PN junction under bias condition. As we said, there would be diffusion current. Now holes would be getting diffused through the depletion region into the N side, where the hole concentration on N side under equilibrium was PN naught, which is minority carrier concentration. Now because of the excess carriers came into the N side, there would be a concentration gradient. As a result, the excess holes would diffuse through the N type material while doing so, they would recombine with the majority carrier's electrons. And as a result, as they move forward into the N region, the concentration of excess carriers would decrease. And if the N-type material length is long enough, then the excess carrier concentration of holes would reduce to zero before they reach the end of the N-type material. If we keep this potential constant, then holes would be injected across the junction onto N side constantly which means the whole concentration on neutral region should decrease. But charge neutrality reasons it cannot decrease. As a result, the holes should be supplied from outside. But as this contact would be metals, there won't be concept of hole in metals. As a result, holes can be introduced if the supply takes the electrons. So that the whole concentration here wouldn't reduce and the number of electrons the supply takes out would be equal to the number of holes injected across the junction. As these holes are diffusing in the n-type region, they're recombining with the electrons, so the number of electrons should reduce. Again, charge neutrality reasons, the electrons cannot reduce in n-type material, which means these electrons would be supplied by the source. And the number of electrons it will supply would be equal to the number of electrons recombining with the holes. And similarly, let us talk about the electrons injected across the junction. The number of electrons injected would be constant. Then the electron concentration in the neutral region should decrease. But charge neutrality reasons again, it cannot decrease. 
as a result the number of electrons how many are, are injected should be supplied by the source and then once the electrons come into p region they diffuse and recombine with the holes and again this hole concentration cannot decrease as a result the supply should be supplying the holes which means it should be taking out the electrons exactly equal to how many recombine with the injected electrons and if you see that the number of electrons are supplied into the pn junction diode by the source would be exactly equal to the number of electrons taken out of the diode by the source we call this number of electrons flowing per unit time as the current flowing through the diode i but as this injection process diffusion and recombination process happens constantly the concentration in the n type material should not be changing with respect to time but we don't know exactly how the distribution is with respect to distance in order to find that let us go back to the continuity equation where del p n over del t the minority carriers holes in n type the hole concentration on n side wouldn't be changing with respect to time so this should be zero and we can write the continuity equation for this as gp minus rp and we can rewrite this as del square pn over del x square can be written as rp minus gp over dp and we know rp minus gp is the net recombination rate u which we have seen is given by hole concentration minus the thermal equilibrium hole concentration divided by the lifetime of holes tau p and we have dp here now we can rewrite this expression as del square of in place of pn writing pn minus pn not wouldn't change anything so let me take pn minus pn not over del x square is equal to pn minus pn not over dp tau p and we can write the solution for this differential equation as pn minus pn not is equal to c times e power minus of x by lp we can represent minority carrier concentration with respect to distance and thermal equilibrium concentration is pn not let's say this is thermal equilibrium concentration pn not and because of the injection the carriers would be high at this point and as they diffuse they recombine and carrier concentration decreases the derived equation suggests that the carrier concentration decreases exponentially that's why this graph looks this way this graph would be for pn of x but what is the concentration of pn at xn that is the question if you know that then we can find what is c if you go back and see thermal equilibrium pn junction where the carrier concentration relationship with respect to the potential across the junction is given by pn not is equal to p p not times e power minus vbi over vt this equation we call it as junction law as it is relating carrier concentrations at the edge of the depletion region with the potential across the depletion region but now as we apply the potential the potential would be as we apply the potential v then the potential across the depletion region would be vbi minus v so over vt exponential then the relationship between then the relationship between the hole concentration on p side to hole concentration on n side would be given by this but this concentrations are not under equilibrium this is under the applied potential but the problem with this is we don't know either of these quantities then we need to make some assumption to then we need to make some assumption if we assume the injected hole concentration is far less compared to the electron concentration in the n side and similarly the injected electrons onto the p side is far less compared to the hole concentration under this assumption we can say the majority carrier concentration is very close to the majority carrier concentration under equilibrium itself 
So we can write this expression as Pn is equal to Pp0 times e power Vbi minus V over Vt. Our interest would be finding this quantity which is Pn minus Pn0. Pn minus Pn0 can be written as this equation where we can take pp0 times e power minus of vbi over vt as common and we can write this as v over vt minus 1 and we know this quantity is nothing but pn0 so we can write a pn minus pn0 as pn0 times e power v over vt minus 1. Now as we know this quantity, now let us find the constant c in this equation. We know that pn minus pn0 at x is equal to xn should be equal to this quantity pn0 times e power of v over vt minus 1. And from this equation, this can be written as c times e power minus of xn over lp. So basically we can write c as c is equal to pn0 times e power v over vt minus 1 times e power xn over lp. So substituting back we get the expression for pn minus pn0 but let me send the pn0 to the other side. We have pn is equal to pn0 plus pn0 times e power v by vt minus 1 times e power minus of x minus xn over lp. In similar lines, if we try the electron concentration on p side, which would be np is equal to np0 plus np0 times e power v by vt minus 1 times e power x plus xp over ln where x would be negative for p side so if you substitute x minus then it would be exponentially decreasing in negative x direction so let me plot that values here this value would be n p naught and this graph would be for np of x and the reason for showing pn naught is greater than np naught is because the p side is highly doped so minority carriers would be far less compared to n side minority carriers as n side doping is less and because the doping on p side is high this delta that we see would be higher compared to this delta we have found the carrier concentration variation with respect to space of minority carriers. Now let us find because of this carrier concentration gradient we have diffusion current. Diffusion current density of holes JP diffusion is given by minus Q DP del P by del X. We can find this value which would be equal to minus Q times dp pn0 times e power v by vt minus 1 times e power minus of x minus xn over lp times minus 1 over lp. So we can write this as similarly we can find jn diffusion which is given by q dn del n by del x where this n is minority carrier concentration on p side which we know here so we can find the expression for this which would be now let us plot how this diffusion currents are varying with respect to distance because from this equation it shows that they are actually changing with respect to distance to make space let me remove the unwanted stuff here and just keep the needed ones. It will be convenient to talk about currents than current densities. So I'm writing current IP diffusion in terms of current density JP diffusion. JP diffusion units is amperes per unit area. So multiplying this with the cross-sectional area of the diode, we would get IP diffusion. Similarly, we can write IN diffusion 
as J and diffusion times cross-sectional area of the diode. So let me convert this JP diffusion into IP diffusion by multiplying this with the A and J N diffusion into I N diffusion by multiplying this with A. We can see that the diffusion currents are actually changing with respect to X. So let us plot these functions with respect to distance. I'm taking current on Y axis, distance on X axis, representing the edge of the depletion region on N side with X N and edge of the depletion width on P side as minus XP. Now first trying IP diffusion at x equals to xn, the value would be just this quantity as exponential would be 1. So let's say that value is somewhere here. And as x increases, this whole quantity would decrease exponentially. This current component would be IP diffusion. And similarly, let us plot the IN diffusion. At x equals to minus xp, the value of this function would be just this quantity as exponential value would be 1 and as np0 is less compared to pn0 because p side is highly doped compared to n side the magnitude of in diffusion at x equal to minus xp would be smaller diffusion current of electrons decreases as we go deep into the p side so this is i n diffusion but when we apply a constant potential, the current through the PN junction should be constant. Whereas we are seeing here that current is actually changing with respect to distance. But then we are missing some point. Let's take this electrons as example. These electrons are diffusing because electrons were actually injected from this side. So we can say the number of electrons that are going into the PN junction is actually equal to the number of electrons recombining with the excess holes in the end region and the number of electrons which are to be injected across the depletion region onto the P side. So basically the number of electrons which are getting injected are something like this. This represents the electron current flowing in. The amount of current flowing in at this point let's say would be equal to the number of electrons per unit time going in to actually get injected plus the number of electrons which are going to recombine with this holes. So starting from here this current would decrease because the number of electrons are actually recombining with this excess holes. So we can say this is decreasing like this and once it actually comes to the point xn the number of carriers flowing per unit time at x equal to xn would be equal to the number of electrons coming out of the depletion region. And this is true under the assumption that there are no generation or recombination of carriers in the depletion region. And it is a big assumption for ideal diode. The number of electrons which are coming from supply to end side, this is one component and this is the second component. And we can say the first component is recombining electron current which tells us the number of electrons flowing per unit time to actually recombine with the minority carriers holes on N side. And the second component would tell us the number of electrons flowing per unit time to actually get injected across the junction to go to the P side, which would eventually contribute to diffusion current in P side. And similarly, the number of holes coming into the P side from the supply would be equal to number of holes to recombine the electrons which are injected from N to P plus the number of holes which are to be injected across the junction onto N side. And of course the number of holes supplied here is nothing but number of electrons taken out that is equal to the number of electrons supplied into the PN junction diode. So the current here would be exactly equal to this current as the number of electrons coming in would be equal to the number of electrons going out. And this current would reduce as it goes towards the depletion region like this. The number of holes flowing in at this point would be equal to the number of holes required to recombine with the injected electrons plus the number of holes to be injected across the depletion region. But as they go they actually recombine so the current actually decreases and once we reach this point the number of holes injected into the junction we are assuming the number of holes coming out of the junction per unit time would be same. That's why the current at this point minus xp would be equal to the current at xn under the assumption that there are no generation and recombination of carriers in the depletion region. 
we can say this is component 3 and this is component 4 where component 3 will tell us recombining whole current and component 4 would represent the injection current now if we add the current components because of the majority carriers and minority carriers the current throughout the diode would be constant let's say this is the current flowing because of the applied potential and now because of the injected minority carriers the current is diffusion current but the majority carriers movement into the pn junction is actually because of recombining current and injection current but now let us find what is this i so at any point if we add the two components we would get the total current i so i'm picking x equals to xn as the point where the current because of the holes is actually the diffusion current at x equals to xn which means ip diffusion at x equals to xn plus the drift current of electrons at x equal to xn we know that the current throughout the depletion region wouldn't change so the current at this point xn would be equal to the diffusion current of electrons at minus xp which means we need to find ion diffusion at x equals to minus xp we can write total current i is equal to ip diffusion at xn plus i and diffusion at minus xp if you substitute xn in this equation ip diffusion this value would be 1 so we'll be left with only this value and if you substitute x equals to minus xp in this equation this value exponential would be 1 so we'll be left with this value now we can write the total current adding these two quantities then i current flowing through the diode would be equal to a q dp pn naught over lp plus a q dn np naught over ln times e power v over vt minus 1 we'll call this constant as i naught which we're going to call it as reverse saturation current we can write i is equal to i naught times e power v by vt minus 1 this is the diode current equation and by the way this is ideal diode current equation because we did lot of assumptions to actually get this the diode which actually satisfies all these conditions is called ideal diode and this equation is ideal diode current equation even though we did the entire derivation assuming that v is positive but this equation is valid even if v is negative if you find the video helpful don't forget to like share and subscribe